Aw, oh, don't worry about that. He'll fall down and break his neck. Mm. Logic says I should give you an ass whooping. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, I like to talk about the 2009 Star Trek reboot simply called Star Trek since the first Star Trek movie made. It's called Star Trek The Motion Picture. Boring ass movie. I've seen it twice, you know, I thought about giving it another shot because I sometimes give movies that I don't like another shot. Well, anyway, this this um, second to latest movie, I know, it's not a real phrase, but whatever. This movie stars Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Simon Pegg, Leonard Nimoy, and Eric Bana. It's directed by J.J. Abrams, who, who also directed Star Trek Into Darkness, Mission Impossible 3, and Super 8. His next project is the, I guess, highly anticipated Star Wars Episode 7, and it's probably worth mentioning. I'm a huge Star Wars fan and a casual Trek fan. I'm, I'm by no means a Trekker. So this movie is a reboot slash prequel to the original TV series. It takes place in an alternate timeline. The plot is a huge Romulan ship arrives from many years in the future, creating an alternate timeline, and years later, the Enterprise crew has to prevent the Romulans from blowing up the Earth, and Vulcan and Kirk and Spock have recently met, and they are gradually getting to know each other. <sighs> oh man, where to begin? Oh, the plot is so damn convoluted, believe it or not. It's a sort of prequel to the original TV series. Kirk and Spot first meet, they're gradually getting to know each other. They must prevent the Earth from being blown up by some angry Romulans. And while that is going on, Daffy Duck wants to steal a huge diamond. Uh, no, no, I'm kidding. The Daffy Duck subplot doesn't exist. The, the plot is so... Flashy, lazy, cliché. Emphasis on cliché, man. The writers must have been... Lazy... Um... I don't know, drunk? I... I feel drunk right now. Like some huge movies, this movie is a mixed reactions movie. This isn't a typical Trek movie. It's not your father's Trek either. It's louder, lighter, faster, and shallow. I'm sure some people feel that this is like Star Wars, specifically the original trilogy, and that's fine, but I respe respectfully disagree. It may be just an another action movie, but it still feels like Trek to me, and that's what counts. Some or a lot of people naturally feel this is decent, and that's understandable. Okay, I guess that was redundant there, but I feel it's good. When I say this movie is shallow, I don't mean like an 80s action movie, I mean it's not very deep or thought provoking like some of the previous Trek movies. The characters are strong or average or serviceable. Um, there's enough development. I guess the sequel Into Darkness has more development. The characters are fleshed out a bit more because that's what a good sequel should do. Let the audience know the characters at least a little better. Jim is a cocky rebel. Spock is a logical, no-nonsense officer. Scotty is an over-the-top comic. And Nero is an angry, insane, but questionable villain. It's probably worth mentioning Chris Hemsworth, best known as Thor, plays George Samuel Kirk, Jim's dad. His role may be tiny, but his performance is still solid. I like Chris Hemsworth. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Should, should I be ashamed? I'm not saying I have a man crush, but if I do, I guess I would look like this. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people find lens flares annoying. They don't bother me that much. They're annoying sometimes or occasionally. Occasionally it's better because I don't... I wasn't annoyed like 15 times. It's not a huge deal for me so far. That's the point. I don't know why he loves lens flares. I don't know how anyone can love lens flares, and it's easy for me to say solar flares instead, because, well, they're similar, and I like Dragon Ball Z. Why does J.J. Abrams love lens flares? Well, maybe he was inspired by Steven Spielberg's light fetish, which I didn't know about until I'd seen the Nostalgia Critic's Jurassic Park review. If you like the Nostalgia Critic, you must check out his Jurassic Park review, which is his latest one. It's hilarious, man! 
Lansfords are so damn annoying, they give a lot of people headaches, including me. Ah! What the hell is the matter with you? Seriously! So this movie is a lot of fun, and of course, it's not the best Trek movie. It may not be a typical Trek movie, good or bad, however you want to look at it, however you view it. It may be just another summer blockbuster or action movie, but it's still Trek. So there's a lot of action and humor and some character development, thank goodness. If there were zero, I guess the movie would have tanked hard like a Death Star being blown up. Well, I'm sorry, wrong franchise. What should I read it? I give it a B. Is it great? Mm, no, but it's fun. In fact, it doesn't matter much if I say it's great. It's fun, and that's what counts. Some people prefer contacts. I prefer subscribers. If any of my contacts are listening or watching, I like to su suggest you sub also. I assure you, I'm not being whiny. So anyway, thank you for watching. Bye. Y'all coming with me, Cupcake.